Hi there, Snipes here. Um, people have asked me how you put a drum beat down, or what process do you follow? So uh, I'm going to show you my process. It might not necessarily be the one that uh, is good for you, uh, especially if you're more experienced at uh, Virtuoso, but if you're new to drums or want to learn more, then uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is what I do. Right here, wrongly, it seems to work. Okay, so let's start by starting a new track and confirm that. Now you do that, obviously the first thing you want to do is to save it. Now, I wouldn't put new save because it actually doesn't if you just say I want to keep new save. So let's be really imaginative and just put drums and save. So it's in there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's in there. Oh, that's where it is. Okay. so. Uh, firstly, let's get the impact up. So this is the drum kit. You might be familiar with it. You might not be. Very quickly run through it. Drumstick angle. Mm. Why you want to do that, I don't know. But yeah, you can. Drumstick length. That's what I call the glitch mode. And a normal person's mode uh, about there. Tempo sync. We're going to come to. But what we're going to do, we're just going to put that on quarter while we're looking at it. And sync late hits as you play. If you want to keep in time, uh, you, you probably will. Uh, if you're new to it, then this will keep it in time to the beats that you are set to. Preview the drum sound. When you select through, it'll play your selected sounds and you can adjust the volume. So it's that easy. This delete, no idea what that deletes itself, maybe? I don't know. All will become evident. Uh, and this, if you want to lose the drumsticks completely while you're playing the drums, if that's your thing, then do it. But yeah, I wouldn't. And these are probably just done a little bit too long for me. And there we go. So there's the drum set. So uh, yeah, where's my looper? Let's find that looper. There you are. So let's put that there out of the way. Put this over here. So first things first, we need to set our BPM. So track settings and set the BPM. I'm a big fan of about 128 if you can get there. Uh, C minor, let's not do that. Let's just go to like a something. Uh, that one minor. Let's do D harmonic. There we go. Okay. We are set. So the 128 ish uh, BPM is basically how many beats per minute that you are playing. And that is a division of one times four. So what is one? This is one bar, unless you're stateside, then it's a measure. It is literally just a measure of time that uh, we in the civilized world call a bar. So if we used to play one bar, and let's take a kick drum, now use your grip button to select it, and take it out, and then you can use both grip buttons to, yeah, do what you want to do with that. Um, and then you've got four drum sounds, as kick drum sounds. And I like to start uh, with a kick drum. You can see them. Now, I don't like to start with the bass drum number one, because that's the, the biggest sound. Oh, I've recorded. I don't want to do that just yet. Gives you nowhere to go, really. So let's start with something just a little bit softer, usually a three or a four. So let's go for three. So if I was to pay the first note, I'm set to four, it'll go and measure. So let's get rid of that. That is one bar. The kick drum is saying when your one bar starts and where your one bar finishes. But I want to go to my BPM. So I'm going to go to a quarter of that one, which sounds like this. So it's playing four beats in that one bar. This is your BPM. There's 120 of those every 60 seconds. And that's your starting point. Just start with the kick drum. We will come back to the kick drum because they're very dry, they're not very exciting. Um, there are complaints that there's only four kick drums, but it's not necessarily true, because there are a numerous amount of kick drums that you can actually create in Virtuoso, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. So we've got that, let's go. It's what they call a basic four on the floor. And we are set to a quarter bar, one beat per quarter, there's four beats in the bar, okay? This gives you the timing. This will give you one beat every quarter. 
one beat every eighth. So you can play eight notes in a bar. This you can play 16 notes in a bar, and this you can play 32 notes in the bar, and 12 and 24 as well, or none at all. Uh, you're not measured or synced, you can just do whatever you want. So we're gonna stay with the quarter, and let's go with the creativity. So uh, this is what I do. I have my BPM going, and then on the every second, I like to put something, give it some texture. Now, obviously, we don't want to do that on every quarter beat or quarter bar. We want to do it every half. Yeah, automatic, just like that, and keeping it on a quarter. And then you can change the volume. But there's no need to do that. You can actually do that here with the pressure sensitivity. And let me just stop that for a second. The pressure sensitivity is what they call the velocity. Now, velocity is speed, yet it refers to the volume. Imagine a car hitting a wall. The faster the car goes, the more sound it's going to make when it hits the wall. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Um, so if I was to go pressure sensitive and I go at it very slowly, my velocity is slow, it's not very loud. If I hit fast, it's loud. So that's the pressure sensitivity. You can turn that off and it's just gonna be loud. It's not recommended, but hey, it's there if you need it. Okay, so we now have a kick and a clap. Okay, but we're still only using the quarter beats. So what I want to do now is use all the the eights, the semis, and we're going to do that with a hi hat. So we're going to switch that up to eight and find. And what I want to do is put something on the half beat, but nothing too. Too much. And we're going to do that on a half beat, but we want it to happen every, uh, not half beat, but every sort of off beat. So, just like that. Now I want to use every 16th. So I could do it on the quarter, but I'll go to the one and I'll show you. Just a little space in the middle to give it some texture, some personality. And there she goes, look at that. We've got a beat going, let's just stop that. Right, so at the moment we have a one measure loop. It starts, it runs, and then it starts again. It runs through and it starts again. What we want to do is turn that into a four bar loop. So if I click the four, watch the circle slow down. Okay, so now it's playing that loop four times. So we're going to do some cheating. We're going to actually create a four bar loop by just creating a runner at the end. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to cue it up and we're going to play a blank at the middle at the start, sorry. And we're going to wait. Oh, we don't want one. Three. When it gets to the end, we're going to run it. Here she comes. Okay, we've now got a four bar loop. Okay, so we want to also add at the end. As well as that, we are going to put just a couple of things in the middle to some effects. It's a 
popular misconception that you're building one entity, that you are making one beat and putting lots of things in it. That's not true. You, once you've done your kick and your snare, everything else should be its own rhythm or its own beat to complement what you've done. But it doesn't have to be the only thing. It can be a standalone. So you can do your own rhythm. Let's do that one. <laughs> nah, one more time. Gotcha. So we have texture. are in there. So now I was talking about the kick drum. Um, the kick drum obviously being the first thing we played. That we want to manipulate that to sound ne less generic, more character, more reverb, whatever. So we're going to add to that. So we're going to go back to four uh, and we're going to go back to a quarter on there. Okay, now we're going to add to that sound. Too much. Yeah. We play it once. And then we're going to adjust the volume. See how it's added a little bit of reverb. It's there. There in the background. Same thing with the tom. No, too much. There we go. No, no, I got too high pitched. There we go. And again, adjust the volume. So it doesn't stand alone, it blends. Get a little bit more attack in our kick. So now, let's get that. <clears throat> so now let's uh, grab the board. We want to start tuning our kick drum. So we're going to put a rumble on the kick drum. We're going to pick a sound that we like, and we need to half this up, and we need to keep a tail off. We want to match four. There we go. I'm just going to keep on quarter. Overdubbing. Do we get what we like? Can you hear the rumble? That's a good first layer.
bit of tuning going on, but not the right one really. It's a bit more punchy. Ah, oh, that's punchy. We get the tail off.
that's that. How to do a basic drum. Well, that's the process I follow here. It might help you. And setting them out all individually, um, then you can obviously solo things. Just like that. And arrange. So this is a very basic tutorial on uh, how to lay some drums down. And that's it. Uh, don't forget, have fun and be creative.